Hi everyone, Steve Yours from Reshift Media here. And today in this video, we're going to talk about how you as a retailer can stay top of mind with customers during COVID-19. So to understand how to stay top of mind, the first thing we need to talk about is what are people doing during the COVID-19 crisis? So not surprisingly, they're going online a ton. So digital media use is way up here in Canada and actually up worldwide. So a chart here from Comscore shows that since February, we've seen a pretty steep increase in the amount of digital media people are using. Not surprisingly, people are working from home, kids are home from school. Uh, we're seeing increases in, um, in TV streaming like Netflix and Disney Plus, but we're also seeing big increases in anything to do with staying connected. So people are stuck at home, they can't get together socially in person, so there's been a big increase in people going on social media, uh, that would be Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, uh, instant messaging is way up, so that would be things like Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp, and even old school email seen an increase. So a lot of that's probably because people are working from home, but the point of this data is to show you that people are looking to, to stay connected, and social media is a huge piece of how they're doing that. So huge increases across the board in Canada for anything to do with digital communication, staying in touch, things like that. Now, what's interesting is at the same time as use of digital is up substantially, advertising on digital is down substantially. So the chart behind me is some data from the US from eMarketer that basically shows that pretty much across the board, digital advertising has been decreasing. So display, social, uh, digital video, even broadcast TV has seen pretty steep decreases in advertising. It's not surprising companies are looking to hang on to cash during COVID-19. Uh, but what is interesting is that last uh, bar at the bottom, which is search advertising, that's actually maintained fairly steady through the crisis. And that's because search advertising tends to be the most conversion oriented of the digital platforms, meaning it has the shortest time between someone looking for your product or service and actually buying it. So if someone's searching on Google for you know, a pair of shoes, odds are they're going to buy that in a shorter time frame than if you were advertising on, say, a Facebook or an Instagram. So uh, we are seeing this exact same sort of trend in Canada where Google advertising is remaining a little more steady, but we are seeing a, a real drop off in display and social advertising. So with those two things, a huge increase in people using social media, but a decrease in advertising, not too surprising to see that we're seeing a decrease in cost of social advertising. This is a chart that shows the trend of CPM costs from early January through to mid-April. And you can see uh, in March, it's a pretty steep decrease in CPMs. Uh, that's a cost per thousand metric, which is effectively a reach metric saying that um, you can pay less to reach the same amount of people on Facebook, Instagram currently. And again, not surprising when you think about those market dynamics that are occurring. More people using it, less people advertising, therefore supply and demand dictates that the cost of Facebook and Instagram advertising goes down. Now, what's really uh, kind, kind of counterintuitive to that is Although the cost is down, the effectiveness is also decreasing. So what that means is we are seeing trends where people are clicking ads less. Behind me are a couple of charts uh, specific to Google advertising for the US. We are seeing the same sort of trends here in Canada. And basically what this shows is that people are clicking the ads less frequently. So uh, search ad clicks are down and conversion rate is down. So what that means is although advertising is becoming less expensive, it's also less effective. And again, when you think it through, that makes sense because consumers are also hanging on to their money. So they aren't spending money on luxury goods, uh, non-essentials currently. So what's happening is although you can buy advertising uh, for less than previously, the propensity for customers to click those ads is also decreasing. So very interesting set of dynamics we see in the marketplace right now. So let's bring that back to uh, the topic of today, which is how you can use that information uh, to help stay top of mind with, uh, with your customers. And we're gonna break this into two pieces. The first scenario is uh, if you're a retailer where you have minimal operations currently. So you're, in this scenario, you're probably not an essential service. You've seen a big decrease in your, um, in your sales, probably close all or some of your stores. Um, this is a scenario for you. We'll talk about the second scenario in just a second. So for you, um, social media is where it's at. You should be focusing your energies on social media, not necessarily advertising. Um, you can actually find that you're getting more effectiveness in organic social media right now. So historically, uh, posting on Facebook, Instagram has been declining in effectiveness for some time uh, because there's more advertising. Facebook's uh, metering back uh, brands reach on Facebook and Instagram. So what's been happening is it's kind of shifted it less into a customer acquisition and more into a 
customer service sort of a mentality. Well, in this environment, it's very interesting because there's less advertising, more people online, and they're looking for information. So for you as a brand, uh, organic social posting, mean non-paid um, social activity, has actually become something that is viable again. So you can now look to stay engaged with people um, on social media during this time. Now, as a brand, um, I've seen lots of posts of people saying, hey, I hope you're staying safe during COVID-19, or you know, here's what our staff are doing during COVID-19 to stay safe, and that's great, but we're probably past that now. We're several weeks in, the uh, hope you're doing well sort of post really aren't gonna get you any traction anymore. You should be thinking about how to shift into sort of a, an engagement and entertainment um, and retention sort of model with your existing customers. Again, this isn't about trying to acquire new customers. This is simply about staying top of mind who, with people who already know and like you. So one thing we really love for this is video. So typically video is not a great sales tool. People watch video, they don't necessarily click through and buy something per se. But in this environment where people might not be looking to buy anyway, it's a great opportunity to stay top of mind. And people are hungry for entertainment right now. Remember, they're at home, they have time on their hands, they're probably sitting on the couch, they're thumbing through Facebook or Instagram. They want to be entertained, they want to find some content to keep them interested. You have that opportunity now to stay top of mind. So a few ideas. Um, these are just uh, random ideas that you can uh, use as a bit of thought starter for your own business. But I challenge you to think about things that maybe seem mundane to you, but where your customers might be interested. And it's um, a lot of the behind the scenes or pulling back the curtain sort of ideas. So for example, um, have a fashion designer walk through their creative process. Shoot a video where the fashion designer talks through from start to finish how they think about their creative process when they're coming up with new fashions or designs or things like that. Show people how their favorite products are made. So work with some of the brands that you may carry in your stores. Is there a behind the scenes sort of video uh, that you can walk through or show people how their products are made? Maybe taking people on a tour of your distribution facility. Seems mundane, but people are fascinated by things like that. And one of my favorite ones actually is, share a video of how your merchandiser thinks of a shelf layout. Most consumers probably have no idea how much work goes into your displays and layouts. Um, and I think that they would find stuff like that very interesting. So these aren't meant to be prescriptive. This is more just to get the creative juices flowing for your own brand. Think about how you can shift from an acquisition into an entertainment sort of focus and then post that on social media, looking to get that reach and engagement within your existing customer base. Now, if you are going to advertise, again, in the scenario where your sales are way down, um, I'd focus heavily on retargeting. So that's people who've been on your website, say in the last 30, maybe 45 days, um, and they've expressed some sort of interest in your products, retarget your ads to them. I would not go after any kind of acquisition campaign at this point in time. I don't think it's a good use of your money. Um, if you are going to do any kind of acquisition, uh, use Google search advertising. So go after very specific terms that you know are high conversion, uh, so that way you're getting biggest bang for your buck. Your objectives if you're in this situation are really about customer retention as opposed to acquisition, maintaining that contact with people who already know and like you, and being ready for when your customers want to start buying again, uh, which is something we'll touch on near the end of this uh, video. But that's a big thing is making sure that you are there and ready when your customers start buying. Now for scenario two, this is where you're a retailer where you've had sales uh, stay about the same or where your sales have increased dramatically. Maybe you're an essential service like grocery uh, or maybe you're selling products which people really need right now. If that's the case, then it's go time. <laughs> this is the time to be uh, buying advertising, being very active in market. Uh, I like social and search advertising in particular for someone like you because now you're in a situation where you can get some good bargains, you can reach the people that you're targeting. Um, really focus on acquisition. So the exact opposite of the advice I gave for uh, scenario one. In this scenario, you wanna be acquiring new customers with the idea of keeping them uh, through the end of COVID-19. And a lot of your messaging should focus on letting people know that you're open, and how they can safely do business with you. So that's a big thing. If you're offering curbside delivery, uh, or sorry, pardon me, curbside pickup or home delivery, if you have an e-commerce portal, uh, let people know that, let them know how they can do business with you and uh, be very aggressive in the acquisition. I also encourage you to experiment with targeting. So although you're going to find some bargains on Facebook and Google and Instagram, um, we are seeing that people are less apt to click ads. So I, I encourage you to try different targeting strategies. So that means uh, cost per thousand, which is a reach strategy. I would try that with uh, social media. 
I would try um, CPC, which is cost per click. I would also try cost per conversion. These are very different optimization algorithms, um, and I would try each of those to see what works best for you in terms of translating activity into sales. Um, I would go very heavy on lookalike targeting on Facebook and Instagram in particular. That's basically where you're telling Facebook, please go find more people like my existing customers so that way I can target ads to them. Uh, so this is very much an acquisition sort of strategy, but using very strong targeting to be able to find the right people. For Google, look at what terms people are searching for in a COVID-19 world. So what you're going to find is your um, targeting is uh, the keywords that are most important, maybe changing in COVID-19. So look for those terms so that way you're able to, um, to change your Google advertising as necessary. The big take home here is your customers are going to start buying again. So you have to work to stay top of mind. So don't go dark, uh, don't post less on social media. In fact, if anything, I would recommend posting more. So if on Facebook today you're doing two or three posts, I would up that to more like five posts, six posts a week. Probably not much more than that, but I would certainly look to increase your social activity, not decrease. Let customers know how they can safely transact with you. That's big these days. And making sure that people are aware uh, is a big deal. And I would really encourage you to be sure you have a COVID-19 emergence plan. So although things may be tough right now, customers will start buying soon. We're seeing some very interesting trends that even indicate perhaps before COVID-19 is done, we may see some increases in, um, in buying behaviors. Uh, we'll do a, a follow-up video on that specific data we're looking at there. But for you as a retailer, you should have that plan ready. So that way when people do start buying, you're there and you're able to, um, to be there and have a strong plan on how you're gonna reacquire customers. So I hope today's video was helpful for you. Um, I hope that gives you some good ideas on how you can stay top of mind. Um, if you do wanna have any follow-up questions or if you wanna get access to any of this information, please contact the Retail Council of Canada or feel free to email me directly. My email is steve at reshiftmedia.com. Thank you and have a great day.